Uh, I'm Dr. Henry Nasrallah, a professor of psychiatry and neuroscience at the University of Cincinnati College of Medicine uh, and uh, director of the Schizophrenia Research Program there. Uh, I'd like to talk to you today about some recent advances in the neurobiology of psychosis. Uh, really interesting things are happening. Uh, most people think that, uh, that psychosis actually uh, shrinks the brain and increases the ventricles. That's been actually in the literature for many years. But recent uh, studies, uh, this came out very recently, last few weeks, show that during the acute psychotic episode, the brain actually swells. It, it, the brain increases in volume and it squishes the ventricles so they are actually smaller. Uh, that's in the very acute psychotic phase. Uh, and the reason for that is water, edema. There's actually a, a diffusion of water into the extracellular space, both in the gray and white matter, and that's very destructive. Uh, to have water diffuse uh, this way and cause brain edema actually starts the process of neuroinflammation. And uh, now we know there's a lot of neuroinflammation in multiple psychiatric and neurologic disorders. They're all brain disorders. And, and so this water diffusion and the edema of the brain uh, starts a, a, a relentless process of uh, inflammation. And the good news is that the antipsychotics that we use for acute psychosis reduce this inflammation. In addition to blocking dopamine receptors, antipsychotics actually have an anti-inflammatory effect and anti-immune response effect. Uh, and so it subsides, and that's when we see then the ventricles enlarge again. So it depends when you do the MRI scan, what phase of psychosis and, and most studies, of course, wait till the patient recovers before they scan them in the first episode. But they already missed the boat because it, those who do the scan immediately when they're very psychotic with the before treatment, they notice this edema, which then subsides. Now, here's the good news and the bad news. If you actually control this edema and, and, uh, and, and reduce the psychosis, which happens all the time in the first episode, uh, that's great. The problem is, though, if the patient discontinues their medicine, as they often do to the poor adherence, denial of illness and negative symptoms and forgetfulness and you know, drug abuse and whatnot, uh, then that second episode becomes more malignant than the first. Recurrence of this edema now uh, not only has inflammation, neuroinflammation, but now starts destroying tissue, and what we call that axonal degeneration. So the axonal degeneration is a whole new stage of the illness, which is much more uh, dangerous to the patient's brain. And, and that second episode, which we must avoid by, at all costs if we, if we can, by preventing the patient from relapsing, uh, and hold them to, that, to, the, to the initial damage, which is reversible in the first episode. Once they get a second episode, and then later a third and a fourth and a fifth, it gets worse and worse. But it starts with the second episode that you get neuronal, uh, axonal degeneration, which then becomes a, a process of uh, tissue destruction. So schizophrenia is actually uh, a, a staged uh, disorder, and, and people sometimes treat all psychotic episodes the same, but they really should, should know that that first psychotic episode is a golden opportunity to hold the illness in its tracks, keep the patient well in remission by making sure the medicine stays on board and never is never stopped because once you get a second episode a whole new stage of the illness starts and now it's much more difficult uh, to treat the patient the same dose no longer works uh, there's some residual symptoms uh, uh, the, the patient uh, stays longer in psychosis they do not recover and reach, achieve remission like they do with the first episode and then it gets worse with the third and fourth and fifth episode so the reason we see deterioration in schizophrenia is probably because the the all the episodes after the first episode is a whole new ball game, and many clinicians see it as just another episode. It really isn't. It's a new kind of uh, neurobiological reality. It's not the, the same as the first one. So clearly it's a, it's a serious brain disorder, but the good news is that we can halt it, stop it, 
at the first episode, many patients actually go to, into remission. Uh, studies uh, show that up to uh, 65% of patients with first episode resume their normal activity, go back to school, go back to work, and stay well as long as the medicine is administered without interruption. Uh, However, if they do get a second episode, most of those patients will no longer respond as well, even to the same medicine. Uh, uh, Robin Emsley in South Africa, uh, who did some of those studies uh, with injectable antipsychotics uh, in the first episode and got excellent response for two years with no recurrence whatsoever, returned to function, and, uh, regained insight, uh, low doses worked, uh, you know, all the good scenario. Uh, when, when those patients were la later switched to oral by other doctors when they finished the study and they all relapsed, uh, they, even when they gave them the antipsychotic, the injectable again, one in seven patients never responded anymore, even though they had excellent response initially. What a pity that we allow our patients to relapse. So the, 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 the message I, I, I want to give you in this brief clip is, if you can avoid that second episode by any means you can, please do, because it might make a huge difference in the trajectory of the patient's life. And most clinicians may not appreciate that or don't, don't take a very aggressive stance about preventing the second episode, but that's when the downhill course of schizophrenia starts. Not in the first episode, in the second episode, and gets worse and worse with the third, fourth, and fifth. So thank you for your attention today. I hope that you will find this information useful.